Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today's program. And uh, I trust God's blessing you with the Word of God today. And uh, I want to encourage you this season. You know, Luke uh, 117 says that all things are possible with God. Nothing shall be impossible with Him. So whatever it is you're believing God for, I'm believing God with you. And uh, send us your prayer requests that we continue to pray and believe God with you. We've been praying for you, my wife and I. I believe in God with you and many of you that are sending um, your uh, requests and prayer. We're going to continue to trust God that He will come through for you. Who adheres to, relies on, trusts in Him, will ever, everybody say ever, will ever be disappointed. But you know what? We, we, have, our, we have our hope in God. You know that God has never failed you? You might have thought God failed you, but you failed yourself. Or somebody perhaps failed you. How to respond to disappointment. And the series, of course, the series is, uh, you know, how to, how to live life and, uh, you know, to be able to deal with Difficult situation. And so, let's go ahead and read Romans 10, 11. The scripture says, No man who, who believes in him, who adheres to and relies on and trusts in him, will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. So, we see here that no man who believes in Jesus or in God, or believes the word of God, it gives us uh, the word believe, it gives us in a more amplified, in, in, the, you know, in the parenthesis there, it says that who adheres to, relies on, trusts in him, will ever, everybody say ever, ever. will ever be disappointed. The Bible says, what the Bible says, I believe, is true. And if we rely on the Word, if we put the emphasis on the Word of God tonight, no matter where we stand in our lives, you will not be disappointed. You might be suffering disappointed. You might have had a disappointment. But God's about to bring you out into a new situation. Praise God. Amen? Amen. We ask ourselves the question, what is disappointment? Well, disappoint disappointment is a missed appointment in life. We all get discouraged by loss and misses. It's when the expectations are shattered. After that they are shattered, some people become despondent and they lose hope. When something doesn't come together like you expected, we get despondent, we lose life, we lose the wind in ourselves, so to speak. So disappointments really are, is really missing the mark in life, missing the real, you know, thrust that you had in your life or missing something that you wanted to do. Someone said that when two things or when two things don't meet, it's a disappointment. It's a misappointment. So we need to have faith in God that God will, even though we've had disappointment and set back, that God can put us back together where we should be. How to react? That's the question. How do we react when you come to a disappointment? How do you respond? Someone said, it's not what happens to you in life, but how you respond to things. It's really about how we see things in life that impacts us the most. Some view life from a dismal perspective while others see things as a necessity or a change or maybe perhaps even an opportunity when they come, become disappointed. They might, something might happen where it doesn't meet your expectation. So then you have an you know, optimistic view on that. You say, hey, maybe this, will be a, this might be an opportunity for me. Brother Hagin used to say a lot, and I used to hear him say this, when, when things go wrong and it doesn't go right the way you expect it, he always said this, it's another opportunity for me to prove the Word of God is true. 
And that's the, the real crux about it is what you do and how you begin to respond to it. So disappointment, how do you, how do you respond to disappointment in life? You know, we all have them. So don't be a pessimist and see things, see the glass half empty. Rather than be, rather be the optimist who sees the, the glass half full. And, uh, you know, the religious leaders in the Jesus day saw, that, saw Jesus as a way out of their bad situation or their present dilemma. And they wanted immediate freedom from their enemies. And so sometimes, you know, we look at an opportunity or something happens in their life where they feel, you know, this is my time, and maybe when it doesn't happen the way they want it to, uh, things fell apart, and you feel, you feel bad. You lose, you become disappointed. You lose life. So how do we react in life is really the matter of when you have disappointments. Everybody has disappointments. Every one of us has gone through disappointment. If you haven't had any real bad disappointment yet, you, you know, just get ready. It's not if you'll have them, it's when you will have them. Right? Can you say I've had a disappointment in my life one time or another? Yeah, we've all had them. You know, so none of us here. This message is made just for you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and read our scripture again. Romans ten eleven. The scripture says that no man who believes in him, how many believe in Jesus? You believe in God. How many believe in the word? Yes, amen. He says, anyone who believes in you, here's, here's, here's what it says. If you believe, this is what happens. When you adhere to it, that means when you begin to act on the word, act like the word of God is true. When you rely on the word of God. You know, you can't trust God if you've never trusted the word of God. See, the word of God and, and, and God and Jesus and the word, the word, the living, this word here is the same. God is, is this book, book here. That's who he is. He put his, his will here so that we can rely on it. We can depend on it. And so anyone who adheres to and relies on and trusts in him, and I'll say this again, it says here, will ever be put to shame or ever be disappointed. It's when you trust the word, when you trust God, then your disappointments are about to be uh, gone, be a, be a history. So as I mentioned, it's not what happens to you in life, but how you respond to life and how you respond to something bad that happens to you that really matters. You ask yourself the question, am I responding appropriately to the, to the problems I'm having today or a major disappointment? I've had to make major checks in my life. I had to make just really, you know, 360s, to turn my back on the disappointment and say, you know what, I'm following God no matter what. I've known that people who've, who've uh, I've been disappointed in people, they've been disappointed in me. They failed me, I failed them. But you know what, I'm going to trust the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to trust God. So don't be the pessimist that sees the glass half empty. Be the optimist who sees it half full. As I mentioned, the religious leader said this. When they saw, you know... Sometimes somebody might see you, you and me, as a way out of their problem. Hey, you have the answer for me. You got the money. You know how to do this and that. And so when, when we put our efforts and believing in somebody and put our hope in somebody, and when they don't come out the way they, we thought it or the situation didn't come out, we get despondent in life. And so it makes us a little shy to go ahead and run forward with the things of God. I know I've had different situations in my life where I didn't want to be as strong as I was to certain things in life because I got, I got disappointed. And so I, I, I shrunk back, and I didn't take the opportunities that, that was presented there for me. But since then, I've changed. And uh, here, here's the religious leaders. In, in Luke chapter 24, 21, uh, these leaders, these religious people saw Jesus as a way out of their dilemma. You know, sometimes we run to the word only just to get out of the trouble for a short time. Just to, just to, just to stop hurting for a little bit. And some people only cry because they've been caught. 
They only cry because they, they hurt, they're hurting because they're in trouble. Well, it's okay to cry. But sometimes you have to understand that you're only crying for yourself. We need to cry because we messed up with God. And let's have the holy, you know, the holy, uh, uh, how you say that? You know, you have, you know, yes, holy sorrow. I'm not sure how you would explain that. But so let's look at the book of Luke here, 24, 21. But when we were, but we were hoping that it was he who would redeem Israel free. Yes, besides all this, and now it's the third day since these things occurred. Now, these people were, Jesus had died, and, you know, they were expecting Jesus to be a certain way. And they thought, you know, here's our, our, our hero. And a lot of the Toronto Maple Beliefs fans are just despondent now. <laughs> Until the fall comes, you know. <laughs> but all the Boston Bruins fans are just rooting away. And, the, and, the, and the, you know, the other, but you know what? We, we, have our, we have our hope in God. Amen? If there's a God, then the lease will rise again. <laughs> Amen? And so, you know, um, so anyway, um, sometimes, you know, we, 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 we don't react in life because we see things a little different. So these guys here, he said, besides all this, this is the third day since this occurred. So they were, they were expecting Jesus to become this... Uh, Political, perhaps, leader or somebody that's going to uh, redeem them and uh, free them from their captives. And so they were, they were disappointed in the fact that Jesus didn't do what they thought was going to happen. So their expectation about Jesus made it a very disappointing time in their life. And perhaps you, with your relationship or whatever it is you're going through, maybe a business deal or something like that, you, you've been disappointed because you lost money, you lost relationship, you lost something that, you know, that you hoped that was going to happen. These guys said that, you know, we hoped that Jesus was, uh, was going to help us out over here. There are many kinds of disappointments in life. There are many kinds of things that happen to people. Maybe you've experienced some of them uh, already that I might mention here. There are business people who have lost deals. They've lost money and maybe merchandise. Maybe they lost clients, maybe partnerships. Or even friends. Because when you do things in life, sometimes you make a bad deal and, and someone, you know, a friend maybe turned it back on you and said, I'm not trusting you again. There are, there are athletic people, people in the sports world who have lost opportunities, maybe a, a big win perhaps because of injuries, they lost their opportunity. Professionals who have who've lost careers or opportunities and they've lost the ability to make uh, something big happened for themselves. Hi, everyone. I trust you're enjoying the program. The Word of God is good. His mercy endures forever, and His Word endures forever. You know, the Scripture says in Luke 1 and 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And you know what? We need to trust God. For his, his Word will endure. And whatever God says, His Word can come to pass in your life if you'd only hang on to the Word of God and trust Him. And Matthew 18 and 19 says, If two shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done for them, my Father which is in heaven. So we are agreeing with you. My wife and I have been praying for you as our partners and friends across this nation and trusting God, according to Matthew 18 and 19, that uh, we pray in agreement. And whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven, according to those scriptures. So thank God for for faith, and thank God for answered prayer. So we're going to pray with you at the end of the program and pray that God will have a breakthrough in your life, with you, and for you. In Jesus' name, we'll be right back after this. Enjoy the program. If you're in the Thunder Bay area, we'd like to invite you to one of our live services right here at Bay City Church in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Service times are Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pastor Roma Fisher ministers a practical word that will inspire your faith. We look forward to seeing what God has in store for you. Uh, something big happened for themselves. Just regular people, perhaps, just li like you and I who lost vision. And their dream had been shattered or cut short because of they made a bad decision along the way. And it come back to bite them on the behind. The question is going to remain always, what will you do? How will you respond?
to the disappointment. You can think of many, even right now, of different things that happen in your life. I could think of a lot of things. You know, uh, even following God, sometimes I thought God was going to do this, God was going to do that, and yet it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. Because I only imagined it in my mind. And perhaps you are, are the same way. You've imagined what God was going to do. But it didn't happen the way you thought it was going to happen. But you know what? There's always hope. There's always next, next year. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you must, have to, you must have to talk to yourself. You ever talk to yourself? I believe many of you are talking to yourself. Sometimes, you know, you're talking to yourself and you don't know it. And you're going through something over and over in your mind. How did that happen? Why did I do that? And I shouldn't have made that decision. I shouldn't have bought that. Maybe I, I, made a, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have uh, said this to somebody. I shouldn't have you know, um, you know, opened myself up to them and so on. The psalmist David asked himself this question when he was down in the dumps. And you know, really, when he was down in the dumps, he should have asked himself, uh, you know, I mean, he had a relationship with God, and he should ask himself, you know, you know, God is with you. And perhaps you and I need to ask yourself the same thing when we're going through. It's good to remember that God will never leave your side. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6 says this, New Living Translation says this, don't love money. How many of you love money? Nobody's going to respond now. I mean, you know, <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to run to the altar right now and cry, prostrate, prostrate yourself in front of the altar. So he says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. So he said, well, I'm not satisfied with what I got. I, you know, I want, I want to have more. <laughs> Well, it says, God says, be satisfied right now with what you got. That's why you're disappointed. For God said, who said it? God. God said it. He said, I will never fail you. You know that God has never failed you? You might have thought God failed you, but you failed yourself. Or somebody perhaps failed you. He said, I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence. The Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? We need to have that kind of confidence like this man said. David said in Psalm 42, 5, the common English Bible said this. Why, I ask myself, are you so depressed? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I so depressed? Why am I so down? Why am I feeling bad here? You know, sometimes, you know, I don't know, it could be, it could be, uh, and, you know, subconscious, or you're not aware of your thinking, you're not aware of your thinking, but you might not be aware that you've been thinking a certain way and it's making you feel down. That's why you have to deal with everything in your life. The Bible said, uh, the, the psalmist said, the one who trusts in God is never afraid of bad news. <laughs> It's hard to, hard to believe that if you, if, if you don't follow the word of God. The one who trusts in God is never afraid of bad news. And how many of us, you know, can say, ouch, because we've, we've been afraid of bad news. And so he, he said, I asked myself, why am I so depressed? Why am I so upset inside? Hope in God. Because, again, I will give him thanks my saving presence, and my God. Psalm 42, 5, the new you know, common English Bible says that. And so I picked different scriptures that say, say it in a way that I believe that common people would understand. I don't use the King James a lot, only if it's straight English. <laughs> so I know that you guys are straight with, the, with English. You know, and I haven't heard anybody here talk at King James in a hallway ever. They never come and phone me and, and say, you know, how Taoists feel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never, nobody ever asked me that, but they always tell me that King James is the only one that Jesus used. <laughs> and the apostles. <laughs> Some guy said that, well, I like the King James because it's the only, the only scriptures that, that the Apostle Paul used. Well, the King James never was written until the 1800s. And God is much older than the 1800s. Well, 
it's, a, it's you know, really, it's the best, one of the best translations for sure. But let's not uh, kid ourselves here. Now, David was asking himself this question. And he was in a, in a certain evaluating situation in his life. He was talking to himself, meditating. He was talking about how he felt. I don't know if you ever get up some morning, and I don't know, like I've asked myself some questions. I said, you know, how come I'm, I'm so, so upset? I, I, why do I feel funny or something? I don't understand what I'm feeling. Sometimes it has to do with what I've been eating. Maybe I ate too much pizza that night. <laughs> Onions or something upsetting me. It could be something you've eaten because it, it brings you down. It's not all spiritual. Or maybe because you watched a bad movie yesterday. Too much uh, Netflix. <laughs> too much coffee, too much coffee, whatever it is. But sometimes, you know, you have to ask yourself these things. So, um, and, and certainly David was. You know, David himself had questions, just like you and I would have questions about why am I disappointed about this situation that I'm facing or that has, has happened. For instance, David had these problems. He, he, struggled, with, he struggled with getting, in, you know, on the throne, Saul was there preventing him from getting to the throne. In fact, trying to kill him when he, you know, trying to persecute him when he was trying to get somewhere and he was trying to do the best thing he could to help the people of God. Sometimes yourself, maybe somebody who is a Christian who is preventing you from entering in where you should be. That can happen. But God sees it. But he had a child with this woman. You remember her name? Her name was Beth, Sheba, Beth Sheba is her name, and, uh, and she had this child, and this child died, and so he was so disappointed, what happened? God says the child's going to die, and so, and he was so, so dis, you know, had a hard time, and then he had another situation where his son, his son that he loved so much, that he, that he loved so much, this young man. And um, uh, what's his name again, this young man? Absalom. Remember, how many remember Absalom? I was going to call, I told, uh, my, you know, my wife, I said, we should have called, you know, our dog Absalom. She said, no, don't call him Absalom. It's <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> like calling somebody Judas. <laughs> you don't want to be remembered like Judas. But anyway, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> <laughs> and so, so uh, where, where was it going to go, talk about? Well, he, he, he had, uh, had this uh, son, Absalom, so he, and this son turn, turns on him and tried to take, you know, take over his dad's business. Take over, you know. If you ever had a situation where somebody turned his back on you and tried to steal what belongs to you, that's a major disappointment. Particularly somebody who loved, who you loved and, and cared for and took care of them. You know, when you, uh, any parent could think about this, you know, you raise a child, you feed them, you give them clothes, you did all these wonderful things for them, and then they turn their back on you when they're 17. <laughs> and they don't want you anymore. And they turn their back and they say, yeah, God, you know, Dad, just give me the car. And then, then your heart breaks and says, yeah, okay, here's the car. And, and everybody had those situations. And David here had a major disappointment here. He was working on some really hard stuff in his life. So it's hard when we lose friends and relationships break or, or, or fall apart. We've all had breaks up, break up in life and some great loss. Something that's been dear to our heart has been lost. And we've become despondent. Unresponsive to, to natural things in life. We don't want to even go out for a nice meal. Ernie, where are you? If he's despondent, I say, let's go for chicken. He's just sitting there like this. <laughs> in normal times, he says, let's go. <laughs> he just has to, you just have to say, KFC, and he just wakes up. <laughs> if you live long enough, you will face many challenges. The scripture tells us from our own, from our Bibles, the common English Bible says, I will say to God, I will say to God, my solid rock, why have you forgotten me? Why 
Do I work, walk around sad, oppressed by my enemies? My bones are crushed. My, fo my, my foes make fun of me, constantly questioning, where is your God now? I mean, this guy was really going through some hard times, going through a really difficult situation. He said in Psalm 42, 11, the common English Bible says, why ask? Welcome back, guys. We want to pray with you right now. Take this opportunity to pray with you. In the name of Jesus, my friend, my partner, I'm going to trust God with you. If you stretch your hand towards the camera as a, as a sign of agreement, I'm going to pray with you right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I come against all the attacks of the enemy against our family and friends. In the name of Jesus and our partners across Canada and wherever they are, I pray in the name of Jesus that healing will be granted unto you. I pray according to the Word of God that the scripture that says himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses. I pray in Jesus' name that healing be granted unto you. I pray that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, Philippians 4:19. In Jesus' name, that every need be met. I pray according to the word of God, that 3 John 2 says that God will grant you prosperity in everything that you're doing right now and give you success. And Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says that God will give you good success as you obey his word, as you trust him in the name of Jesus, that your family will come together, that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you, Father, for all the prayer requests that's going up right now. And I pray as my partner and friend names their uh, condition and names their uh, belief according to the word of God, it will be met. I agree with them. Healing, deliverance, health, prosperity, success, breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I'm trusting God with you in Jesus' mighty name. Wonderful Holy Spirit, minister to that heart right now in Jesus' name. We're, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank God. We're trusting the Lord has answered your prayer. And I believe God has done it right now in Jesus' name. We're going to see you again next week. God bless you. Same time, same place. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Spirit Alive. For those in the Thunder Bay area, our broadcasts are taped live at Faith City Church, 360 Black Bay Road, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Service times Wednesday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10.30 a.m. We look forward to meeting you.